If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own or reread the question before moving on. What we can do first is draw a picture that represents the given information. So here we have the proton. We've put a little positive sign on it to remind ourselves that it has a charge of positive one. The question noted that it was moving vertically downward, so we have drawn a velocity vector pointing straight down. And then we have a green vector that represents the magnetic field. The question notes that the magnetic field is horizontal, though it didn't say whether it's horizontal pointing in the rightward direction or pointing in the leftward direction. We have assumed that it's pointing in the rightward direction. And the value of the magnetic field was given to us in a standard unit, so we can add that to our drawing. The speed of this proton was also given to us in the question, but it was given to us in a non-standard unit of kilometers per second. So we can go ahead and convert the given speed from kilometers per second into meters per second. And of course, to do that, we can use the fact that one kilometer is equivalent to a thousand meters. And when we cancel out the kilometers and then multiply across, we get 1,996 meters per second. So these are the given values. Now the concept at work here is that anytime we have a charged particle that's moving through a magnetic field, it's going to experience a magnetic force. And the magnitude of that magnetic force, which we can symbolize as F sub B, is equal to the product of the charge, the speed, the magnetic field strength, and then the sine of a particular angle. The angle will be measured between the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the velocity. And we can see from this picture, hopefully, that that angle is actually 90 degrees. We also recall that the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. And so when we plug in 90 degrees for the angle, this term that we've just underlined right here is going to equal 1, which means that essentially we can ignore it. And so the magnetic force becomes the charge times the speed times the magnetic field. We already have the speed, we have the magnetic field strength. The charge, which is represented by Q, would depend on the charge of the proton. And the charge of a proton, of course, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the charge, we'll plug in the magnetic field, and then we'll plug in the speed. So we've plugged in the known values. We have omitted the units just because we were kind of running out of room there. But when we calculate this magnetic force strength, we get approximately 1.28 times 10 to the negative 20. And then, of course, the standard unit of force will be newtons. So this is the correct answer for the magnitude of this magnetic force, which is one part of the question. And now we have to decide what the direction is as well. And to do that, we're going to use a right-hand rule. Now we know to use our right hand because we have a positive charge. And what we'll do is draw a right hand with the fingers and thumb oriented in a particular way and then we'll explain. So here is my best attempt at drawing the right hand. Let's first note that the side of the hand that we're viewing is the palm side, not the top side of the hand. So just make sure that that makes sense. We've pointed our thumb straight down. And the reason we do that is because we always want to point our thumb in the direction of the velocity v. So that's why we're pointing our thumb down, because the velocity is also pointing down. The four fingers of our right hand will point always in the direction of the magnetic field. So since the magnetic field is pointing to the right, we've pointed our four fingers in the direction of that magnetic field. The magnetic force itself will be the direction of the palm. Now hopefully we can see from this drawing, and you might want to pause the video and try this with your own right hand, we can see that the palm is actually pointing out of the computer screen towards us. And it's a little bit hard to draw that. In fact, it's impossible. But what we could do is maybe just angle a little force arrow right here to show that that's coming out of the screen. Sometimes to show out of the screen, they'll also draw a little dot to represent out of the screen as well. And so we can conclude that the direction of this magnetic force would be out of the page or out of the screen. And that would conclude the answer to this question.